Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and sometimes gouache tutorials and I have Keenan here with me. Hello, how are you? He does our video work. We also chat sometimes and that's because we like to hang out with you. That's pretty much all yeah, of it. We want you to feel comfortable. Except it's really just us hanging out with each yeah. other. We don't need to talk about that. Though. No, that's fine. <laughs> we won't break the fourth wall again. <laughs> so this tutorial, we are painting um, this postcard um, leaves in color uh, for Tasha, who's our Let's Make Art Matter recipient for the month of September. Um, Tasha has had to overcome a lot of things in her life. Her sister nominated her. Um, most recently, she is at a facility. Um, she's recently overcome COVID. She's also dealing with complications from a stroke. And just, she's not allowed to have visitors right now. And Oof. it's hard. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to experience anything. It's hard to experience anything alone. And so we just want to reach out and send her some love and make her these cards. Um, so hopefully she knows that she has people on her side and her team backing her up. So um, she loves, I put it on the postcard here, hopefully that was helpful to you guys, that she loves warm red and autumn colors. And so I thought it'd be so fun while we're transitioning to fall. And actually this tutorial releases on the very first day of fall to paint um, the leaves in transition colors. I like that. Yeah. So the supplies we are using are around six and around two. Um, we're also using our colors from the September gouache um, subscription box. Um, should I swatch them? Sure. Okay. So our first color is carmine. Our second color is permanent yellow deep. Our third color is turquoise blue. Our fourth color is permanent white, which you probably can't see. And we also, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna use this, but this was also in your box, ivory black. So you're free to utilize this if you want to. And also, of course, I just wanna say, our Let's Make Art Matter postcards, you can absolutely paint anything you want. You don't have to do this project. If you think of an idea that would be better for you, go ahead and do that. Or you don't even have to be a subscriber to participate in this. Um, if you're interested, no matter who you are, you can paint this with us. You can um, email our customer happiness team, hello at letsmakeart.com, to get the mailing address, and you can paint your own postcard and send it her way. So don't feel like you have to have all of these supplies in order to do this. Nice. I have an idea that you could paint. You said warm red? Yeah. But I thought you said warm bread. So just like paint a loaf of bread? Listen, I would love... A loaf of warm bread. A loaf of warm bread. I know. Can, is there anything more loving than no. like fresh bread? No, there's not. <sighs> Maybe a hug from Mary. Mary Cray. That's my mother-in-law. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I want to, gosh, I wish I could remember it. Somebody said, this, was re this is relevant to what we're talking about. Perfect. I promise. Um, there was a school that was talking about how they communicate colors to, um, to blind students in a school. And so they use descriptive words and they use brown as um, like melting into a hug, um, the smell of fresh baked bread. Ooh. And it was like love. I wish I could remember, it was so good. Actually, I, like I am, I'm gonna put it, Michael, Please put the little quote right here in a little quote box. Right here. Perfect. And I hope that just warms your heart. Because when I read that, I was like, oh, like that is so beautiful. And I feel like that's what we're going for here. So Exactly. Okay, now let's get to painting. So what I did here is I did a series of leaves. There's five of them. And it's kind of a they blend from one color to another across. Now we are using gouache in this, so you can make these transparent or you can make them opaque. I'm gonna leave that decision up to you. I kinda did in between. So you can see that some of these are transparent. You can kinda see where they overlap. And then other times you can't really see. That's okay. That's why I like gouache, you guys, because you can decide what is best for you. So I'm gonna start with the first leaf. I'm not using an outline. If it's helpful for you to kind of like roughly sketch where your leaves are gonna go, um, you can do that. And you could just do ovals. 
So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm glad I sketched that out because I see that this is all the way to the right. So um, you can just erase and move it over a little bit. So maybe one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Okay, now we got our leaves. I'm gonna use my round six and I'm gonna grab some turquoise blue and some yellow and mix that together to get a green. Now I want this green to feel kind of a bluish green or like a healthy leaf green. Mm not yet turning to fall colors. Like a spring leaf. Yes, fresh green leaf. Maybe a little bit of blue in there too. And I have my oval, so I'm just, I'm gonna have it rounded at the bottom. And then when it gets to the top, I'm gonna have it kind of point out. Now there are many different shapes, leaves. They come in all different colors, shapes, sizes, and we appreciate them and we value them for what they are and do the same with your paintings, okay? So don't stress too much because I'm telling you somewhere there's a leaf that looks like that. And if there's not, that's the whole point of painting, my friends. You get to make your own world. Now, I like to do little drops. I, I did the green. I used water to kind of blend it out. And I like to just drop in stronger colors here and there. So if I want to do some blue can I drop that in and then what I'm going to do for like the the serrated top part of the leaf is I'm going to work my way around the leaf and then have it kind of poke up poke up point up and then the same thing on the other side I thought you said polka po polka like the polka dance that's fair poke up if you want to do a little bit of yellow in there too you can because even spring leaves have yellow in them. You That's know? true. And there is my leaf. Nice. And we're going to move on to the next one. Now, don't worry about the pencil marks. We can erase them. And if you're painting over them, since gouache is opaque, you really shouldn't see them through. So don't stress about them. When they're dry, we can erase them. OK, so now I'm going to mix more of a yellow green. So I'm just going to use the same green that's on my palette and grab more yellow and mix that in there. And then if you want to make yours more opaque with depth, this is where like the white would come in handy. I'm utilizing a lot of water to make mine a little bit more transparent, so I'm not gonna utilize that as much, but I just wanna remind you that if you're trying to get different values with opaque gouache, um, then use, utilize the white and the black for your highlights and your shadows. Okay. Okay. Okay, keep on going. Round it up. I'm going to just let it overlap. Go to a point. And remember, these all don't have to be exactly the same leaf. They can vary. Using water to kind of blend that out. You could do a maple leaf. Oh, yeah. Maple leaves are a little bigger, though, so you could do like three of them. Mmm. That'd be sweet. Yeah, we, I think it was actually our first fall, I did a watercolor project that was called Fall Leaves, and they're maple leaves that are all these different colors in one. We do a lot of wet on wet Ooh. and salt, and they're beautiful. So if you're interested in maybe doing that maple leaves, you guys can watch that tutorial and do little mini versions because um, that project was so fun. Okay, and I'm just adding little serrated edges to my leaf. And of course, you know me, I like to drop in a little bit of color here and there. Maybe some just yellow. Oh, do you know what? I'm gonna make mine actually this green one wider. So then it will overlap with the next one. See how narrow this is? Yes. I would have to make this middle leaf super wide mm. to overlap. 
but that's not a big deal. Just widen it out. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna do like the leaf has turned yellow, yellow. I'm gonna mix a tiny, tiny bit of red in there to give it kind of a warmth to it. And if you want it to have like a yellow brown feel, then you can actually take the red and mix it with the green over here that we've already mixed. And now we get this like murky brown. And mix that in with your yellow. And now you have like this brown color that you can drop in there as well. So I'm gonna start with just the yellow. Maybe a little bit of that brown and red in there, warm it up. Your mic cut out right when you said warm it up. I said warm it up. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> now my goal with these color transitions on each leaf is just to have the color different from one leaf to the next. So if you're putting your yellow down and it's matching what's already over here, then add some uh, adjustments to it to make it so um, it's a different color. And I like to use the side of my brush when I'm trying to do thicker brush strokes instead of the point because it just fills it in faster. And now I'm going to take some of this brown that I have, just going to drop it in here. And I'm going to add my little serrated edge. The leaves I was looking at, I don't know what kind of leaves these are, and I'm really sorry. But the ones that I saw pictures of, is it was more just the top part that was serrated. And serrated, I mean little spikes or little points. The bottom part was smooth. So that's why I'm just adding them on the top. But again, this is your art world you're creating. Also, so many different kinds of leaves. So if you want to do this with another type of leaf, feel free to, my friends. Okay, now I'm on to the next one. I'm gonna do more of an orange. So I'm gonna take that red. Now the red is very, very powerful. So when you're mixing orange, you just need a little bit of the red. And just so you know, when we're mixing these colors, this doesn't make like a vibrant highlighter orange. It makes like a brownish orange or like a really golden yellow, which I like. I'm into that color and it's perfect for our fall leaves. I just wanted to give you a heads up if you're getting frustrated that your orange isn't like, you know, highlighter color. Okay. Got my orange, overlapping my yellow. Using water to spread it out. And if you, all, if you want them all different heights, they can be. Again, I'm really stressing to you guys that these do not have to be clone copies of each other. Because it's really, really hard to do that. <laughs> I can't do that. And then I'm gonna introduce a little bit of brown into this, into the orange. Have you tried just copying and pasting? It's oh a control gosh. C, control, control, control P? Print, that's print. Oh. You're close though, you'll figure it out. <laughs> if you're having a hard time doing the pokies with your six, you can go back with your two. And like, you can always add them on after two. Like even after it dries, like I can go back in here and be like, here's a little pokey. Here's another little pokey. And it might be a little bit easier for you to get that thin edge with the smaller brush. So know that you can always adjust as you go. And something else that I've done if I wanted to like really make it feel like they were layered on top of each other is after it dries, like this kind of got muddied in here, I can go back in with a green 
and put that like on top of the yellow. Or I could do it opposite where I take that yellow orange and paint over the green. So it looks like now the yellow leaf is on top of the green leaf. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So have fun with that, you guys. Feel free to, to layer that how you see fit. If you wanna try and like put a little green in there so it like seems like you can see through it, you can try that. It's a little bit trickier though. I lifted up some paint and I'm dropping in a little bit of green right there. It's up to you. Okay, now we're doing red. So our red leaves, and red leaves tend to go, then the next stage after a red leaf is almost like a purple brown. Oh. So I have a little bit hints of purple in here as well. So I'm gonna start with my red. Kind of blend it out. But what you don't wanna do is have your red be so transparent that it becomes pink. So that's why that one is not as transparent because then that wider the paper shows up through more, it gives me a pink feel. Um, mm. And I wanna make sure it feels that red purpley. So I'm, I'm doing a little bit of purple in here. And really play, like allow yourself to like, just drop in some water, see what happens, drop in another color give it space to be something and you don't have to correct it right away. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Sometimes I like just to do stuff just to see what happens with maybe not having anything in mind because then it's not like this leaf I painted isn't meeting my expectations. It just is. And whatever it is, is like right, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? I was gonna try and add something, but I don't think it would fit. Okay. The leaf is like, I am what I am. It's a Nacho Libre song. I don't know what Nacho Libre. Oh, I knew it wouldn't fit in there. I'm so sorry. Do you know what though? There's someone watching this who was just like, Keenan, that's exactly what I was thinking. And they're gonna comment and they're gonna say, thank you so there's, much. There's so no for way. that person, that was for you. <laughs> That'd be impressive if anyone was thinking what I was thinking. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Okay, those are my leaves. Nice. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and just put little stems in. So I'm taking my round two and I'm gonna mix brown. And you can also mix brown by just mixing all three colors. Ba bam. I got a nice brown. And I like really warm browns that have undertones of red or orange. So sometimes I'll just throw a little bit extra yellow or red in there to make it feel nice and warm. Okay, and then I use my brush to mix and sometimes when you use your brush to mix, it holds on to too much paint and you don't want that paint. That's why I just did that, to get rid of the excess paint on there. Cause I wanna be able to make a thin line. So I'm picking up paint, I'm squishing it so my bristles are squished to a point. And then light pressure. And I'm just gonna start with lines and then I'll thicken them. Those are cute. Those are nice. <laughs> Those are cute little stems. Yeah. And then if you want to thicken the base of them a little bit, you can. I'm not gonna talk very much during this part because I gotta focus. Okay, and then if you wanna do little stems, like veins in the middle of your leaves, please feel free to, but I just wanna point out that if you have a very, very dark brown and you try and do stems in the in veins in the middle of your leaves, it's gonna feel really disjointed. So add a little bit of water to your brown or yellow or something to lighten that value up. So then it's just suggestions of veins instead of like thick, dark lines. Okay, so if I'm doing like a little vein here. And if you want it to match the colors that you painted your leaves, you can do that too. I'm just doing mine brown for simplicity, but this is your painting. And then you can just do little, little things poking out from there. For some reason, this is making me think of Gilmore Girls. Really? Yeah. What aspect? 
just like the theme in the very beginning, I guess. I don't know. You know what? I do think of that little town when it's like fall. Yeah, totally. Totally. I think of Gilmore Girls, like 100%. small town fall. Yep. Gilmore Girls is a great fall town slash winter, fall time, excuse me, slash winter time to watch. Yeah, it is. I feel like I didn't say that sentence correctly. I knew what you were trying Thank to say. You. Little veins. And again, they're just kind of suggestions. They don't have to be fully formed renderings. Just a little line here and there. Oh. Gosh, I really love how this yellow one turned out. I do too. That one and the red one I think are my favorite. I think the orange one's my favorite. Oh, well, orange is your favorite color. That's true. Okay, and then I'm just going to go th through with my eraser and get rid of my eraser lines now because we're using gouache um, you are free to paint a background um, on this and you could do that first if you wanted but even if you did it now it wouldn't be a big deal because if you were to paint over any of the leaf let it dry grab some gouache paint that leaf again no big deal you know what I'm saying nice. Gouache. Gouache. Just be careful not to smear your paintings when you're wiping away erase. I've done that so many times. <laughs> it's very disheartening. Okay. That's our postcard. Nice. Um, I think this project is fun. I love the colors. I love the blending techniques. It's a great lesson in color mixing. And I really think Tasha will enjoy being able to see all these different color leaves come in the mail or whatever it is you choose to paint her. Um, if you don't know what Let's Make Art Matter is, it is our monthly postcard that we send to a single recipient. It's in the subscription boxes. You do not have to be a subscriber to join in on this for us. You can always email us for the mailing address and um, join in with us. Um, the whole point of it, the whole idea of it, is just for us to connect with each other and recognize each other as human. And I know that that seems silly sometimes, but especially like right now, it's so easy to view people who are different from you as other than you or, you know, us versus them or not, not recognizing this, this shared experience of life and love and pain and all of the wonderful and hard things that are life. You know what I'm saying? So this is very dear to my heart. I hope you guys take the time to do it and grab someone to do it with you because I think the more that we can just take a minute out of our day and share, an ex share a moment with someone, I just think the better our world can be. And it doesn't have to be this grand gesture. Sometimes we see that people are experiencing such hardship and you think like, there's nothing I can do to make this better. Would a postcard really make this better? And I understand that way of thought. There, I completely understand that. But for me, it's not necessarily about the perfect postcard. It's not about painting the perfect painting or saying the perfect words. It's being able to look at someone when they're experiencing something and saying, I see you and I'm here for you. And that's what this whole thing is about. So it's scary and it's hard, but if we do it and if we do it regularly, we can make our community kinder and better and our, Lord, our lives better, I think. So um, I appreciate you guys who take the time out to do this. Um, I love you so much for it, and I hope Tasha enjoys these postcards. Um, her sister nominated her and sent me a, p a picture of postcards they received so far. Awesome. So I'm really excited for her to, to get them and give them to her sister. So um, again, you guys are wonderful. Um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope Tasha enjoys her postcard. If there's someone that you think would enjoy something like this, we have a nominate button on our website, letsmakeart.com. Just scroll to the button bottom of the website and there's a little nominate button there so if you think of someone if you're listening to this and you're thinking of someone maybe nominate them um, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys later bye